Welcome back to Cinema Sit Down. I'm your host, Cassidy, today, and I am joined with... Thomas. I'm Sam. I'm Jake. And I'm Kayla. And today we watched Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, and we're going to sit down and discuss today, so won't you join us? Right, welcome back you guys as I said we watched behind the mask the rise of Leslie Vernon this afternoon it was everyone's first watch today it was originally released in 2006 and it we follow the story of Leslie Vernon as he wants to become one of the next slasher movie icons and we follow a film crew as they document his journey up to his killing spree and then we uh, follow along from there so Initial thoughts of Leslie Vernon. What are, what are we thinking? Um, he was quite a character. I feel like, um, as like a, someone who like has made those types of videos where we've gone to people's places and we've interviewed them, it, I just kind of really liked how it was like, he was like a good interviewee and he was like good at answering questions and he was good at all the stuff that you'd want someone to be good at when you're trying to interview someone, despite the fact that he's a serial killer. I don't know. That was something that I thought was funny. He's also, he was funny, as I will far, say. As far as his personality mm -hmm. goes, he was like a 50-50 half-breed from, of, of like, Spencer from iCarly and Ryan Reynolds, <laughs> who's also just like a serial killer. <laughs> he's also a killer. He was a DMP dream, if we're talking yeah. about no, interviews real. and mm -hmm. personality, yes. so. Yeah. Right. What did you guys think? I would, despite, I agree with everything you all just said, how, like, the personality, he was very there and out there. Like, he seemed like such a normal guy until you thought the serial killer stuff. The whole time I was uncomfortable. <laughs> like, anytime he was on screen, I'm like, that, it, he really captured the idea of, like, that psychopath or something who is putting on a mask. Yeah. Because, mask. Yeah, and what I got from it, it was, it was weird because, um, leading up to it like I had no idea I I I haven't felt any sort of way about a movie like this before it's weird mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's because like for every movie there has to be um, there has to be suspense there has got to be um, foreshadowing I didn't see any of it in there even though it probably was there I didn't see it they built it up at the beginning to, I not, to yeah. the point where I had to well no they, they, they made it seem like like oh yeah he's going after this girl and they talk about it from the point of view of someone who would be doing this and I, my thoughts of this movie in particular are like is this a documentary that's disguised as a horror movie or a horror movie that's disguised as a documentary and I keep going back and forth between the two but it wasn't until like 10-15 minutes in I had to of my own accord go and look it up of like is this supposed to be like he's actually going to kill them or is this just being like, oh yeah, this is a case study of what they would do? Because that wasn't really clear, and, and of course, I should have waited because it came clear probably 10 minutes later. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I, the, when it came clear to me that they, the group that he was with was the group that he was talking about with like targeting, um, I figured that out around the time when they were at the school and he was telling them like how he picks a group and how he finds out who's gonna do what and how is he gonna like figure out who's like his final girl. Um, as soon as he started describing that, I was like, oh my god, he's basically just describing their entire group in a nutshell. I'm, I don't know. It was definitely, like, really well set up, though. I, I really liked it. I thought it was an interesting way to go about it. Yeah, so something I really enjoyed about this movie was the style in which it was filmed, from mm -hmm. going handheld to then they would cut to, like, okay, now we're in the cinema yeah. version. How, that kind of made it seem so much more realistic. Yeah, yeah, to me, yeah. um, and that choice um, also was giving DMP energy. It really yeah. was. Yeah, it any, really was. Any time a film like showcases like what we do at all, like even when they were putting lots on people, I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, they're like, can we put a mic? Like, can we can we throw a mic on you? Like, he was taking off from under his shirt. I was like, oh my god. One thing I really liked was during the interview process, they're like, hey, we should get you asking that question. Yes, yes. And so I, they went back, repeated the question in a different way, and just it worked. I, I <laughs> That's it, exactly it, how it, it is. It really did it, it, like I oh sorry sorry um, I didn't even see I didn't even see uh, like 
the predictability for me was not there. Well, yeah, I mean, I just got lucky. I don't pick up on those things <laughs> at all. I'm not, I'm, I am so honest. I am the worst at picking up details like that. So I don't know how it happened. So <laughs> I'm, I don't want to sound like pretentious, but I find a lot of movies predictable. Well, they all follow a formula. Yeah. So, they yeah. all follow a formula. So, and, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying is that, um, to be honest, I don't watch TV that much. Oh, I don't either. This, okay. I yeah, think this movie was... It wasn't necessarily predictable in the, in the traditional sense of like, oh, it's a slasher movie, this is going to happen. That mm -hmm. was what made this movie unique, though, is mm -hmm. they said, okay, so we're going to take all these horror tropes, literally name dropping, like probably yes. three of the biggest horror movies or franchises in mm -hmm. the last you know, 40 years, mm -hmm. and directly calling reference to them and acting as if Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, or Freddy Krueger were all real, real people in the world that was just like, out and about, like you could have just, and at one point he's like, well, I can't be the neighborhood boogeyman if you see me out mowing my lawn on Sunday. Like I have to stay hidden. Like people, everyone thinks I'm dead and I have to weaponize that. That's right. one thing I was confused about because I didn't know if the movie was implying that like all those famous movies, like the killers were real or if it was just him like aspiring to be like the movies. I could not for the life of me differentiate. I was like, so is Michael Myers real? Like, cause they had the Halloween, like the kid, the mom shutting the curtains when the kids were on Halloween. I'm just like, so, so did that actually happen in this universe? I couldn't tell. See, I think really what, what really happened when, uh, when, um, uh, geez, I'm forgetting his freaking name. Leslie? Les Leslie. Leslie. Uh, when Leslie gets killed, when he gets his head crushed, do you all remember the scene oh, where he was grinding the apples mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then he and then he said i i wear flame retardant oh oh my god he did say that oh i forgot that's the reason why he still lives well i mean but oh what i guess he didn't, he didn't get, his head, get his head crushed and then just no 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 it, it was it was far from it because it was because that's remember so cool. he crushed those apples and then you, you hear that <laughs> yeah well okay but, as jake just said there is an end credit scene that as the credits are rolling they're showing us in the autopsy and we see Leslie on the table and as horror tropes go you know he gets right back up he gets up he does yeah, yeah. at the very they, very end. They, they set that up too because the, so one of the people that they go and interview as well in the beginning of the, of the documentary is they talk to a local uh, what are they referred to a local legend or local uh, like veteran in the in the yes. field of being he's this horror icon, yes. he's, but he's retired now. And when they go to interview him, they're like, oh yeah, well, he's just out back in the in the tank. And they're like, oh, well, what does that mean? And they, oh, he, they go crazy. out and they're like, okay, well, we gotta go get him. And they start digging just into the ground, doesn't look like anything's there. And they dig up essentially this big barrel that's underground, reveal <laughs> it, and then it's um, Scott Wilson, who's playing the character, just laying in the ground, just like, <laughs> what I, day is it? Oh, okay. And they set it up so well because they're like, yeah, well, you got to practice stuff like this because, you know, you, you got to, mm -hmm. sometimes you got to look dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they set that up probably 25 minutes yeah. into this yeah. movie. What I think is, like, really unique about this movie, I think, is that the, uh, the person, the, uh, the killer, um, Leslie. Leslie. <laughs> Leslie comes back to life for a reason. Well, they, B besides being paranormally or supernaturally gifted. Well, but the idea is that he's not. He's that, not. That's what I'm saying. Right. Right. Is that he's, he's setting up in a way in which he looks like it's yeah. paranormal. But throughout yeah. the documentary, they basically explain. Yeah. Like, exactly. He's just a man. They even say it at the end. It's like, don't worry. He's just a man. And then. He gets back up, Be yeah. but he's just a man who's really, really smart. Yes, and has planned Frightly. everything. Frankly, yeah. too mm -hmm. smart. And to build off of that, so our final girl, he's building it up to be Kelly this whole time. This mm -hmm. girl, this cheerleader, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and we Average follow run of the mill. Yeah, run of the mill. Yeah, she's a waitress, whatever. And then, as we follow through, we find out that the final girl has been the lead filmer of the this whole, yeah interviewer this whole time mm -hmm. yeah. I actually kind of picked that up not necessarily that specific conclusion until like after they got in the house but more of like I started getting the vibes of it when they started coming closer per se because whenever I watch any sort of movie 
where I see like a guy and a girl and they start getting a little closer. I'm like, oh, they're gonna make them fall in love, aren't they? Which is fine sometimes, but other times. <laughs> so I was starting to think it was like he was. They were starting to like come attached, and I was like, oh, okay. There and was... then when it turns out that like he was feeling that love towards Kelly, I was like, wait a minute. If they're starting to feel that love towards each other, that's... Yeah, I, I didn't know what they were going to do with that type of storyline. I thought, like, it was going to become, like, the veteran's serial killer's wife type of thing. Like, how she ended up, like, that's being what a I was supporter really worried about. of that. <laughs> I, I was wondering if they were going to do that with her, which I wasn't entirely sure I felt about that. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of uh, seemed on board well, she, yeah, she, she, she was on board she was, I don't think she realized it was real the whole time, which I don't know... Why, Why she was, she was yeah. but or <laughs> or she realized it was that the entire time. But then she got like a real like a she 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 was really excited know. about it. I right? guess, but then whenever it started happening, she freaked out. She was like, "Oh, actually, this is not cool anymore." I know it wasn't cool anymore. I feel I like it was very much like the filmmaker's oh, yeah. high of when something's happening. You're like, "Yes, this is good content," and then yeah. you realize, "Oh, people are dying." You, you yeah, all yeah, talk okay. about the mother, yeah, right? Of of uh, uh, Leslie. No, I'm talking about um, okay. our main chick. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. What was Taylor. 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 Right. I'm talking about her. Because she, I don't know. Well, they had a whole scene together. It was the, like, set like a couple hours before, like, the main, what we'll refer to as the slaughter night, where he plans yeah. on carrying out this meticulous task of, like, I'm going to take out a group of, like, nine teenagers in the course of an hour and a half. Which is insanely <laughs> detailed already. Yes. And then he's, like, getting himself pepped up, and he's, he even tells her in a scene that I think is not supposed to be recorded. It gets the feeling that, like, like obviously it's in a documentary, it's in a movie, so it has been recorded. But, like, in the context of the scene, he doesn't know there's a camera on him. And he, he's like, yeah, this is, like, this is such a big deal for me. This is essentially this is Christmas. Is the one the tree or whatever? Oh, when he, when They're like, up cries. in the barn. And he just starts crying. Yes. And she, like, she goes to, like, pat him on the back and then ends up, like, going to hold his hand. Like, she feels yeah. some kind of genuine connection towards him. Mm -hmm. And it isn't until a little bit later that... He like I think she realizes the full scope of what she's doing. Like she is I think in a way is a little bit maybe like Stockholmed. Like she yeah. she's yeah. been threatened yeah. at this point in the movie by him. It's like yeah. you this is my life goal, you have to let me well, carry this out. Whenever they were he was showing them how he picks out his groups of people, he had that moment with a final girl where they like made eye contact and he was like, See, like we can feel each other's connection. And I'm assuming yeah. that Taylor and him also had some sort of weird connection to because mm -hmm. I also thought that they were going to like fall in love mm -hmm. at a point and I was like okay I don't know what, this is weird. what direction this is going <laughs> yeah. but okay but they didn't yeah I'm grateful kinda, for kinda that they didn't, yeah honestly. I didn't really need that yeah. I'm glad they didn't kiss let's just put they it that yeah. Yeah. yeah there was a couple scenes where I'm like are they really thankful. about to do that mm -hmm. <laughs> I know I'm so glad they didn't I will say Leslie as a character though I didn't hate him. He's kind of funny no. as a character. He's weird. Yeah. So I wasn't the only one laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's designed to be a very charismatic guy. He's like, oh yeah, you know, like I'm I'm doing this for the industry. Like this means a lot to me. But mm -hmm. I also have some fun with it. And he's going through. He's like, oh yeah, why wouldn't they try and get in the car? That's why I got the spark plug. They're, they're not going anywhere. Like he's very upbeat and joyous about the entire situation, mm -hmm. despite mm -hmm. the fact that he's murdering essentially a whole class of people. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I um. I had the same thing where I kind of was like, oh, this guy's like kind of like, he talks what he's funny. He has like a good personality. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, this is like, he's like the perfect cookie cutter serial killer. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's how they typically go about where they're like, oh, they were so, they were so nice. You never would have guessed that they would have been that because they were so funny and so like happy all the time and that you would never know. I'm like, oh, well, there you go. He fits that box. It's it really a good, does. It's a good comparison with the way you think about it. I like that. Yeah. That I was just good. about to bring up the Google search because I did it right after the movie. I was like, "What kind of? What is this listed as?" And it's a horror comedy. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. "Oh, well, mm -hmm. you, that that works for his character." Mm -hmm. He reminded me of a specific character, and I can't think of his name. He was in. In, in what movie? I don't know. I wish I could tell you, man. It was... Spencer from My Carly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's exactly what I was thinking too. So yeah. how? So in this universe of all these horror villains are real, how do you think Leslie compares? to some of the icons they mentioned, Michael Myers, um, the Nightmare on Elm Street, I think Jason. he's right on par. You think so? I yeah. think he is on par with the rest of them because simply for the fact that he has planned everything out to yeah. such a detailed extent, because they even at one point were like, yeah, he told us his whole plan of taking out these teenagers. 
And then they keep saying, oh, well, now we're included in that plan. How is it like we're going to disrupt it? Yeah. But it turns out that was actually the real plan all along, which is mm -hmm. some Ocean's Eleven type, will actually kind of <laughs> yeah. not yeah. Yeah. to an yeah. extent. But I also, that was super if, you, cool. if you take yeah. that for exactly what it is, the amount of detail and planning and, and character study that you'd have to do on all the people who were going to be there, that you have to do the, for that. You, you literally taught people how to escape you. How do you then catch them? Mm -hmm. and coming up with a creative solution for that. He's so immensely clever. He has to be on par. He has to be yeah. as great as I was least. impressed the whole time. Yeah, like, I, yeah. I was, I was they too. They were talking like, oh, they, well, he wouldn't get our car because he wasn't talking about us. I was like, they, he absolutely would get mm. your car. That's the thing. Like, like that, I yeah. knew, and she was like, it's not going to start. Why are you trying? I was like, yeah, you should know yeah. that. Why are you in the car? I'm pretty sure that spark plug he held up before he was even there. told him to get out was from their van because the teenager comes in and says, our tires are slashed. Yeah. So he slashed yeah. their tires, took the van spark plug. That, yeah. I, you can drive on a slashed tire. I just got to say that. Them? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to ruin the car, but if you need to escape from a murderer, yeah, that's you can do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, as long as the car's not on fire, I think yeah, everything's fair good. Fair enough. Very true. What did you guys think of his mentor in the film? I forget the character's name, but uh, Wilson Scott is the actor. I loved his character. I did too. Yeah, me too. too. Me too. He, yeah. was he was really encouraging along with his yes. mother, which was. Wife. Which was, wife. Uh, well, wife, sorry. Yes. Wife. I, I, was, I was thinking of Leslie in the yes. sense. Uh, there for a second, but I, they were both really charismatic and like very happy that a murder scene was about to happen. It felt and very much. Yeah. I don't know how many people have heard the joke, but the joke that like, oh, if you work in like retail, like a restaurant job, your best friend at work for like a teenager is like some guy in his sixties. Yeah. Yeah. That's the exact, that is so yes. that's exactly. the exact dynamic that we see mm -hmm. between those two characters. Cause he's like, oh yeah, this is a veteran. He taught me everything I need to know. Mm -hmm. And we're great friends. We live just down the road. Like. He's one of the only people who knows my secret. Yeah, I loved how proud they were of him yeah, for doing such a just, dark. It was beat. just, I, what was the one where they had said like, oh, well, I had this guy show up and he shot me in the shoulder, but it was fine. I was wearing a vest, and they're like, oh my god, you have one of these things. Wow, and I'm so proud of you. And, and, and Ahab. And, and, yes. You got an yeah. Ahab. Yes. And they were so excited about it, and I love that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought it was super interesting how like. Their dynamic was definitely like the two coworkers, but are also like work besties type yeah. of situation. I think as we have gone on, like we have uncovered more and more and more about this movie that we probably would have gotten if if we watched it a, if Separately. even if we watched it a second time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we, Cinema Sit Down yeah, for. Of yeah, course, this is Speaking what of that, for. we're gonna give our final um, ratings of the show or, or of our movie before we wrap up today. Kayla, what do oh, you me think? First. Um, I think it was well made, certainly. I did like the choices of the different types of cameras. Still not a fan of slashers and horrors. That is, that is just me. I get all tense and I get uncomfortable, so I'm going to give it a five. Good camera stuff and production, don't like. Okay, okay. Jake? I think I would give this an 8.5 mm -hmm. if it were to be Tied in a horror sense. Yeah, it, it was... It wasn't predictable to me, which was very new and hadn't been, it had been so old to me, unpredictability, until that movie. And I felt weird. I was like, wait, th this ain't happening. And uh, I just, I, I yeah. know, I just found it. I would also give it an eight and a half. I wanted to start October off with a spooky film. I thought it did idea. really well. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And I would definitely recommend to watch again. I think I had like a good seven. There were a few scenes I was just like, hmm. Mm. Okay, but the whole concept was really cool, and the ending, like, kind of twist was really nice. I was like, ah, oh, cool, I like that. I think a good, like, seven is probably mm -hmm. fair for me. And I, f I think mine's going to have to be a nine. Ooh, I really like the concept of this movie. It was mm -hmm. executed almost flawlessly. Of course, everything does have some flaw. Uh, and I think yeah. that I really like it because it leaves, if you're paying attention, it rewards you for that. It leaves very little to the imagination if you recall the planting and payoffs that it brings up, such yeah. as the fire retardant and, you know, being able to slow your heart rate down all the yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Things like that. It really rewards you for, for being an active watcher, I guess. Yeah. And I like movies that do that. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Happy October, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.